join me in the spirit of prayer and meditation. After our spoken prayer, the time of silence, we will sing together hymn number 123, Spirit of Life, which is also printed in your order of service. We'll sing it first in English and then in Spanish. Our prayer this morning is by Katie, Kendari, and Morris. Spirit of life, spirit of love, spirit of generosity, as we draw near to that quiet, essential side of ourselves, may we open enough to consider the sacred choices we make each minute, each hour, each day that add up to a lifetime. Let us become aware that here is the place to be forgiven and to forgive ourselves for any past thoughts and actions. Here is a place to begin again with love. As we are forgiven, let us open our hearts to forgive others to pray for them well-being and joy, that they may be lifted from worry and burden into peace and abundance. May we all be blessed with riches of the Spirit and moment upon moment of peace and serenity. Amen. Days of Awe by B. Fox Martin. The drapes hung heavily from the corner of the ceiling, fluting down onto the floor. A small tide suspended in time. The pitchy, velvet haze with age keeps secrets remembered and forgotten in its folds. Keeps charms of music, chatter, longing days, and passionate nights. Keeps cherished lies and wordless prayers. Keeps the downbeats of hearts. Keeps laughter, lost blessings, desires, and defeat. The book is open. This is my offering, what I can bring, what I know and can't remember. The all of the irreconcilable me, not the to be better, do better me, just the one and only love better me. The window is opened. I wait for the swell of your wind to meet my weave and webbing, my essence and grain. I wait for the drapes to stir. Entering the Days of All by Karen Miriam Goldberg. Let us walk unfettered into these days unfurling in the sun. Wide fields of old grasses bracketed by sunflowers and pebbles. Let us step into the lapis sky that fastens itself to the driveway, the sidewalk, the worn leaves of dying summer under new leaf fall. Let us give up the wasteful thinking, the 2 a.m. anxieties over what cannot be changed, the waking with a gasp. Let us stand in the morning, the new chill of the air clearing the discards of time, fear, reaching too hard or not enough. <clears throat> Let the wrongs be made right. Let forgiveness overtake the words we hear and pray. The stories we've made and tilted. Let us remember this dreaming song from all our beloveds long gone or just over the bend. Each note engraved with lost hands, singing of how good it is when we dwell together. Let the peripheral vision in the days of awe show us the world, 
the first seeing of the heart, the last pulse of those we love who travel with us. Let the wind shake the trees, the tatted leaves shine, the last butterflies flash their orange, the first dark blue of night open into a panorama of past and present light on its way to us all. Let the next breath we take inscribe us in the book of life. Let the next breath you give welcome us home. Those of you familiar with the Jewish holidays know that last week was Rosh Hashanah, the Jewish New Year. We ushered in year 5777, according to that calendar. And this week is Yom Kippur, or the Day of Atonement. Now these two holidays are actually much more important than Hanukkah in the Jewish tradition, although Hanukkah gets a lot of attention because of its proximity to Christmas, I think. But these autumn holidays are actually a lot more central to the faith tradition, and they are collectively called the High Holy Days. They're called the High Holy Days, but they are also including this week in between the two, called the Days of Awe. And I was particularly struck by that this year. I was newly stunned by the poetry of it, the Days of Awe. And I noticed that in our hymnal, the hymn that we chose this morning for this is in a section called the Days of Awe. I was attracted not only to the meaning of the two holidays and to the deep rituals attached to them, but also to the poetry that has been written about the days of awe. And we already heard two of those poems this morning. Thank you, Stan and Ada. But I have more glorious poetry to share with you today. But first, I think we need a refresher course about Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur so that we can truly appreciate the imagery in this poetry. For instance, I don't know if you caught references to the Book of Life in both of those poems, or the returning theme of forgiveness and regret. Rosh Hashanah is more than a New Year's celebration. The two days of Rosh Hashanah are a commemoration not only of a new year, but of the creation of the world. And in them, the faithful stand before divine judgment of their deeds and omissions in the year ending. Some believe that human beings are in mortal danger at this time, with our lives hinging on the decision to repent. Only those who choose to forgo sin are inscribed in the symbolic Book of Life that is the central liturgical image of Rosh Hashanah. And it initiates <coughs> ten days of repentance, an attempt to clean the slate for a new year, a renewed life. This culminates in the holiest day of the Jewish calendar, Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement. Yom Kippur includes communal prayer, ritual, and fasting. A word that comes up a lot during this time is teshuva, whereby you admit to sins, ask for forgiveness, and resolve not to repeat those sins. And the word teshuva is often translated as repentance, but its literal translation is something like stopping in your tracks and turning around in the other direction. The Jewish concept of sin is that you have gone astray, but also that you have the ability to turn it around. It's possible to turn your life around and to make amends in a way that will heal relationships with yourself, with God, with friends and family, with community, with the world. With such rich themes, 
It's no wonder that there's a lot of poetry about this. Here's a poem called Days of Awe by Joy Gaines Friedler. Listen for the themes of return and forgiveness. September, the moon's gone empty as though it too seeks a place inside itself. The pool equipment stowed, the mowers return to the shed. A quiet ascends, like the silence after bells. Soon the nightbirds will call other nightbirds, each call a small pledge. It's difficult to ask forgiveness. Easier to accept, I suppose. I will ask my mother, who can no longer remember if she's eaten today, if she's seen my dead father, or the way the earth evolves beneath the unrelenting moon, the way what disappears still remains. Prayer is as much defiance as it is agreement. She'll answer yes, sure, then I'm fine. Like those night birds, I will listen hard. And here's another one, a longer poem that I fell in love with this week called The Days of Awe by Alicia Osterker. So listen for the themes of repentance and forgiveness. Listen for references to the Book of Life, to judgment. Listen to how she plays with the idea of teshuva and turning around. And notice also the timely reference to a hurricane. <laughs> the days of awe. Rosh Hashanah, the birthday of Adam, the innocent earthling, and the day Hagar and Ishmael found water in the desert. In memory of him, mud staining our shoes, water flowing in handfuls, we sniff the smell of living, dying things. Reach into our pockets for the bread that represents our sins, toss it in, praying, release us, help us, forgive us. The river answers by swallowing our crumbs. Do our prayers travel upward? Do they defy gravity? Like rain splashed on the windshield of a car speeding through a storm. In 10 days, we will go hungrier, pray harder. Yom Kippur, we destroy, we break, we are broken. And this is the fast you have chosen. On Rosh Hashanah it is written, <coughs> on Yom Kippur it is sealed. Who shall live and who shall die? Which goat will have his throat cut like an unlucky Isaac, spitting a red thread? And which goat will be sent alive to the pit where the crazies are, thread lightly tied around its neck? Who will possess diamonds and pearls, and who will be killed by an addicted lover? Who shall voyage the web of the world like an eagle, and who shall curl to sleep over a steam grate like a worm? Who shall be photographed, and whose face will disappear like smoke? This is the fast you have chosen. Turn. Return, how to turn like leaves, like a page, like a corner. What is our knowledge? What is our strength? I am like the stones people place on graves to make them a little heavier. Such a stone says in its oracular way, don't come back or return only as grass. But it is tired of being a stone. It wishes to be open. It would like to be an egg. Honeybees manufacture honey. 
A power station generates electricity. Cotton plants exude smooth fiber. And my cells secrete anger. My mind propagates envy. But repentance, prayer, and good deeds avert the stern decree. I am like a ramshackle house during a hurricane, struck by guilt waves and fear waves. The walls could collapse at any time, but the foolish old woman who lives there refuses to leave. On Friday night, Lisa and I joined friends who offer creative and liberal Jewish rituals and celebrations on Uncle Tim's Bridge in Wellfleet. Standing on the center of the bridge over the tidal marsh seems to me a good place to celebrate anything, really. Just three weeks ago, we stood in that place to take photos after our wedding. But it was also a particularly good place to mark Rosh Hashanah with the ritual Tosh Leek. Our friend explained it to us. This is the time when we cast breadcrumbs into the water and cast away our sins, she said. Her husband shared stale bits of bread from his pocket with us. Sin isn't really a good interpretation of the Hebrew, she said to us. It really means to miss. So you don't have to think of it as casting away your sins. You can think of it as casting away your missteps. I held my dry bits of bread in my hand and thought about my missteps. I looked forward to casting them away. The tradition calls for casting them into water, where the fish can come and eat them. On that night, the sky lit by a slender new moon, the tide was going out, pulling the water under the bridge back to the ocean. I liked the idea of fish eating my regrets, so that I had no opportunity to scoop them back up. I liked the idea of the tide pulling away my missteps so that I could start fresh without having to carry them with me all the time. We threw our tiny pieces of bread into the water. They floated a while. I never did see any fish eating them, but I'm sure they did. They're not ones to pass up the gift of food simply because the crumbs were heavy with sin. I like to think the fish enjoyed them. <laughs> Our friend sang songs, blowed the mystical shofar made of a ram's horn. The blasts of the shofar are beautiful, but they're also supposed to be a wake-up call. Rosh Hashanah is the time to shake ourselves out of our spiritual slumber, reconnect to our source, and recommit to how we want to be living in this world. What did you throw away when you tossed your bread into the water? Lisa asked me on the way home. It wasn't any one thing, I said. I guess I just threw away all the times I was closed-minded or cold-hearted when I wasn't being open. Me too, she said. I cast off being judgmental, judging people before I even really know them. I don't know what the others cast into the water from Uncle Tim's bridge, but I love that Lisa and I both cast away being closed off from others. That we're both trying to begin a new year more openly. Karen Miriam Goldberg, 
The author of the poem that Stan read earlier writes, In the fall, the Jewish holidays come. First Rosh Hashanah, then the New Year, then Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement. In between the two are the ten days of awe. A time when a person is supposed to reflect on her life, making amends to anyone she's offended or hurt on the basis that praying together can help us come into alignment with the Holy. But we can only make amends with other people by making amends with other people. My poem speaks to my yearning to come to a clean and open place during the days of awe. I offer it on the premise that whether we're Jewish or not, we all benefit from forgiving others, and most of all, forgiving ourselves. So that is my invitation to you this morning. The invitation of the deep and rich Jewish faith tradition to use this time, these days of awe, to forgive others and to forgive yourselves. We all miss sometimes. We all miss the mark. But we begin again in love. <laughs>